Okay, so let me tell you a story. A friend of a friend is building electric motorbikes, it's the one that you see right now, and he asked me to help him with the display, to use color LCD to replace the current segment display that you see right now. And of course my immediate answer was yes. One big yes with a very small asterisk. And I will give you a few seconds to think about what was my requirement. Actually, please put this in the comment section, I think it will be fun to read. Ok, so you got it? My request was that I will record all the progress, findings and details here on my YouTube channel. But if your guess was that I want to ride this bike, you are right as well. So let's take a look at the current display. It's a segment display and if I stop the star up sequence, you see all the individual segments, but not all of those are actually being used. Some of those are required by law, which includes the turning signals, the high beam signal as well as the odometer, and I believe speed as well. All the other ones are optional, but it's of course nice to know how much battery you have remaining. Or maybe what's the better temperature. So driving a color LCD is of course too much for something as simple as Arduino, and since there is not too much time, instead of trying to learn a new microcontroller, I've decided to go with something what's called the intelligent display. And probably the best example of intelligent display is the next gen display. So the intelligent display is not only the display itself, but it's oftentimes coupled with the touchscreen, and with a dedicated controller that is responsible for drawing all the stuff on the screen, as well as controlling some simple logic like having buttons buttons, checkboxes, switching screens or like in this case having the slider. And you can see that this slider sets the value of this animated gauge. So the intelligent display can do a lot of tasks by itself, especially the heavy lifting stuff of drawing all the images. And then you can use any microcontroller, for example the Arduino Uno, to send comments to this display. For example saying, you know, show me this image or show me the screen, set the gauge value and stuff like that. And it's quite convenient because you can pretty much separate the logic from drawing the, all the graphics. Now I've told you that the next gen display is the most common example of the intelligent display, but I'm actually not considering it for this project. And that's because I have two requirements. First, it has to somehow fit into current enclosure, which it kind of does. But the second requirement is it has to be sunlight readable, and that's unfortunately not the case. I believe this display has a brightness of around 300 nits, and to be sunlight readable, it's usually required to have the brightness of at least 800 nits. Thankfully there are other intelligent displays which do have this brightness. And I have three of those. So this one is from Display Visions, this one is from DWIN, and the last one is from Stone Technology. They are all sized 4.3 inches, but the final size of course varies a little bit based on the PCB size. So let me give you a quick overview of those individual displays in no particular order. The display from Display Visions has the highest brightness of 1200 nits, and it's also the most ready to use package. You can see there is a double sided tape on the back of the glass, so you just need to create a rectangular hole in your enclosure and just put it in there. The next display is from DWIN, this one has the highest resolution of 800 by 480 pixels, compared to all the other displays that have a smaller resolution. The brightness depends on the used touchscreen technology, so this one without any touchscreen has around 900 nits, and it goes down to 800 for capacitive touchscreen and 700 for the resistive touchscreen. The last display is from Stone and this one has the largest flash memory which is 128 megabytes. And while the display has the brightness of 1000 nits, unfortunately the display technology is not IPS, it's a standard TN display, so when you rotate the display, when you tilt the display, the colors will change quite drastically. There is also one more display that was meeting the criteria, but unfortunately I couldn't get my hands on it. And that's this 4D display, but as you can see, it will be back in stock in 5 or 6 months. So in the next video I'm gonna go over every single display and show you how to get it up and running, and of course tell you which one I think is the best for this job. So hopefully this video is first one in the series where I will guide you through my journey of creating the digital dashboard for the electric motorcycle. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section, I will try to answer those either there or in the next video. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks, and bye. Oh yeah, and I hope that the last video in this series will be me riding the motorcycle, but uh, we will see.